Today we're going to talk about hormones. As chapter 6 mainly talks about hormones, so the first thing that we are going to talk about is the endocrine system. The endocrine system is the system that collectively um, consists of endocrine glands and these endocrine glands are called so because they are ductless glands. So there is another type of glands called exocrine glands that have ducts through which they pour their secretions to uh, the organ that um, the secretions is supposed to reach. But in the endocrine glands, they pour their secretions directly into the bloodstream so that the blood can carry the secretion to the um, organ that's supposed to receive the secretion. So they are ductless. These secretions are called hormones. Okay, then any disturbance in the secretion of the hormone actually affects the organ that's uh, affected by this hormone normally. It affects its growth rate and affects its function, as we will know later. So, that's it about the endocrine system. Then we have a little bit of historical notes about the discovery of hormones in, in animals and in plants. And, by the way, hormones in plants are not called hormones, they are called oxins. They are called oxins. So, in animals. In 1855, we've got a scientist called uh, Claude Bernard. Well, uh, he said that, he hypothesized that the sugar which was stored in the liver is an internal secretion of the liver. While the duct, the bile duct, which secretes the bile, he considered this as an external secretion of the liver. In 1905, another scientist called um, Starling, he found something really interesting. He was testing the pancreas, the effect of food when it reaches the duodenum on the pancreas. When the food reaches the duodenum, which is found in the beginning of the uh, small intestines, the pancreas was stimulated right away to produce the bile. So he thought that there was a nervous connection between uh, the duodenum and the pancreas, so he cut the nervous connection and yet the pancreas was stimulated. So he said that there must be a non-nervous stimulation and that was actually true because he found that there was secretions from the uh, internal mucous membrane of the duodenum that goes to the pancreas and then it stimulates the pancreas to produce the bile. So he called these secretions hormones and hormones is originally a Greek word which means activator. So that's it for uh, hormones in animals. In plants we said that they're called Oxins, um, a very important scientist in this field is um, B. Jensen. He was uh, working on discovering oxins and uh, he found that there was no 
special organ that actually produces auxins in plants, of course. So he found that they are produced by the tips of the um, plant. We have this part, which is called the preoptile. If this is the, the stem, this part is called the preoptile, and this is the tip. So at the tip, the auxins are produced. Uh, auxins have a very important role in the shape of grafted impl implant because they cause a curvature in plant growth according to different factors like um, gravity and light, etc. So if, if they want the plant to curve this way, they decrease the growth at that side and increase the growth at the other side, so curvature occurs. Uh, we can summarize the function of auxins in four points. That they first they regulate the plant growth. Second, they organize the development of tissues. Third, they help with flower formation, leaf fall, and ripening of fruits. And finally, they affect the function of all tissues in the plant. So that's it for today. The next time we will know how did the scientists get to know uh, the functions of hormones and the characteristics of hormones. So until then, I thank you for watching and see you.